supposed to gloves here and this is another video in the digital audio basics so today we're gonna to be talking about binary and basically what it is so let me uh, pull up a bigger screen here so here's a bigger screen and binary is ones and zeros you probably heard about it one being not there I mean one being there zero being not there or on off you know things like that so what's the difference here what have, what have we got going on why do we use binary well we use binary because it's more accurate. So we need to come up with a way to turn our our analog signal into numbers. And the whole reason we want to do this is because all the variability and the infinite number of variations we can have in a resistor or all the different analog components that we use to represent our signal fluctuates our signal a little bit and we get noise and all sorts of other problems. So we want to convert it into numbers. Now, we could use decimal numbers, we could use 1 through 10, but if we use that, we're going to be subject to trying to get resistors to recognize 1 out of 10 uh, levels, like 1 tenth of a volt, one, 2 tenths of a volt, 3 tenths, and then it'll put out a number for that. And those systems like that do exist, but we don't want to use those because we're, we're suffering from the same problem we had with our analog signal in that there will be an amount of error variation that will be much higher than we would desire. So we've settled on pulse, pulse code modulation, PCM, and we use binary to represent that. So it's simply on or off. There are a number, it's, it gets a lot deeper than that, and I can probably state this a lot more comprehensively, but you need to know at the end of the day, we use binary. And so that's just the zeros and ones. And as a waveform, it'll send out a waveform representing this, because our computer has to have a way to interpret it. So a zero. So our lower value is zero, our higher value is a one. It's called a biphase signal because there's two phases. There's on or off. And this is really nice because it's really easy for a resistor to tell if there's no voltage or if there's volts. And that allows us to represent our signal. Now, when we put a... Now, I'm not going to talk about how binary represents numbers and adding numbers and stuff. Maybe one day I'll do a, an advanced digital audio course because there's a number of other implications here. But the important thing is that we use binary to represent... Our, our stuff and we've come up with a way to make it accurate now some that will be talked about is something called word length so the computer so in binary you know we have and well let's talk about decimal so we have 10 fingers and we start off at 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then when we put up our last finger we go to 10 well when we do that Here's one. This one value can be represented. It could be 0 through 9. We have 10 possible values. We add another value. We now have the number 11. The number 11 requires a second place, though. It requires another, um, another digit to represent. When we do that, before we could only represent zeros, numbers 0 through 9 with one digit. As a result, we had 10 places, that 10 values we could represent. If we add another number, we multiply that times 10 because that next value can represent 10 places and combined it's 10 times 10 we end up with 100. If we added a third value, we now end up with three places and we can represent numbers up to 999, another one 9,099, 9,999 and the list goes on. So the same thing applies for binary, only these, these columns add up a lot faster. So we need more digits to represent our numbers. However, we only have on or off. So it's much simpler to tell if our number is zero or one. So for example, let's say that we want to, in binary, I guess I'll explain a little bit about the scheme of binary. So in binary, we have one or zero. So if I put a zero, if I put a zero up, we're gonna or a one in our first spot. Like let's say I want the number zero, I just put a zero. If I want the number one, I'll put a one. But let's say I want to count to like the number three. So if I double my value, so this can represent zero and one. If I want access to more values, I got to add another digit. When I when I do that, I've just doubled the amount of possible values. If I do it again, I double it again. If I do it one more time. I've just doubled it again. What does this mean? Well, this this means it's the same thing as when we roll over to 10 and we need to add a new value to represent another space. We've just increased our numbers and they increase at an exponential rate. So the one way to calculate this is for however many bits you have, which is a single number in binary land, um, four bits is a nibble and eight 
bits is a byte. So those are terms you're going to hear tossed around. They're just referring to different lengths of binary. So uh, one way to figure this out is we know that however many bits we have, so we'll call that n bits because we don't know what it is. So we'll call it n to the power of two because we're doubling it each time. So like if we have four bits, we can have 16 values because two times two is four, four times two is uh, eight and eight times two is 16. So these values would represent the ones. This value would represent uh, two. This value would be one. This one would be two. This one would be four. And this one would be eight. So if we wanted, for example, the number. Now, it's zero to 15. I should I should correct myself. Some schemes start with one as, as the base number. And then it counts up from there. But for us... You would get the number 16 by 1111, and that'd be 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which would be 15. But you add the last one, you get 16. Because 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then that's because we're starting at 0. So it can represent 16 different values. So that's binary in a nutshell. Now, when you want, now the computer has to know the length of this, it has to know how long our numbers are going to be. And this is on the integer system, this is a really, really important. So this is called your word length. So let's say we need to represent values up to 255. We're going to need, or it's 256. I can't remember right now. I believe it's 256. No, 255. It's 256 rolls over. I don't even, I can't even think of it right now. But when you do that, you're going to need eight bits. That's called a byte. You're going to need one byte or eight bits. And that's going to be our word length because we want values up to that. If we want even more values, we're going to need more things. And this is how we represent numbers. It's important that you understand this because when you're dealing with measuring your voltage, you're going to want to be really accurate. You're going to want, you know, extensive numbers to describe where that spot is. So you can be really specific. And there's a limit to this on um, how what our computer is capable of, but also what we need for our ears to be able to even tell the difference. It's sort of like 1080p versus 4K, but then like from 4K to 8K. Like there's not a huge difference. It's diminishing returns as we increase at this point. So there's a there's generally 16 bits will do just fine for describing an amplitude value when we're measuring amplitude. We'll talk about that in bit depth. But there's other unusual things that come into play. But you need to understand that uh, that's what binary does. It's how we record our values. You increase the length of your word. And now when our words don't line up, we get uh, funky problems. We run into things like jitter when our words don't line up. When our word lengths are wrong, we just get straight wrong values. So it's really important that we have established our word length. And that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe. Now, there's, there is a lot more to this. I could just go on and on and on. There's something called, I guess there's one, a few more things that you covered. There's something called the sign bit. So you can represent positive and negative values, but it takes up, it takes up your first bit. So if you have a bit, now we've only got three bits to express our number and our first bit will tell us whether or not it's positive or negative. Uh, our first bit that tells us our biggest number possible, because when you're doing binary, your first, it's called your most significant bit, your first one. That's like the biggest number. So if you're counting up to like 250, 256, 255, whatever it is right now, uh, that first bit will be your most significant bit, your largest value. So if that value is wrong, you're going to run into some issues because your volume is going to be way off from what it should have been. Uh, now, your last bit is called your least significant bit, and it's actually not the least significant because when you get into the maths that are going on in your computer, the way it adds things, uh, that becomes a real big issue when we talk about noise being correlated to a signal. But that's that in a nutshell. That's binary. If you have any questions, let me know. There's there's uh, there's information online on this, but you just need to understand these basic principles. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Reversing. Reversing. Reversing.